Hi there, I'm Nina Garadia. I'm a somatic experiencing practitioner. And many of you know, I also share somatic work from my teacher, Ryan, who is fully liberated or enlightened. So I want to again share from him today and differentiate this from traditional somatic experiencing. So if you're new to this channel, I recommend you watch one of my original videos with the trauma flow chart. And you'll need that to understand what we're going to talk about today. But the gist of that video is that when we have thoughts and when we believe them, we create emotions in our body in real time and that they show up as physical sensations. When we resist these feelings, they get pushed down into saved holding patterns in our bodies. These feelings that are stored and even the feelings in real time they create more thoughts. And so this is a ever reinforcing trauma cycle that we need to hack at many different stages in order to heal. And that chart talks about five different hacks that we can use. So the other previous video I made, I'll link here, the psychological ego versus the somatic ego, how to get under the secondary fear reaction in the body. This is a video that I'm going to continue with right now, talking about primary emotions. And this is looking at it more from a spiritual paradigm, but it's very much somatic in nature. So in that original chart that I spoke about, a lot of this, the stories we have, the emotions that we're trying to avoid feeling, but then the bracing secondary somatic reactions that we do feel that help us not feel our primary emotion. This is all stories about the secondary emotion usually. So I have never said that before, but Ryan has explained this to me in just a revolutionary way. And I think this is more accurate. So it doesn't mean that what we've talked about previously isn't helpful, effective, doesn't work. In fact, it's an excellent introduction to this work because you pretty much have to work with the secondary responses first because otherwise we can't get to the primary emotion that's buried so deep underneath all of our defenses that have developed for years. So that could be the physical somatic reactions, defending, from feeling the primary emotion, that can be all the stories we have that are defending from feeling the primary emotion. So all of this traps our attention. It's trapping our attention in this prison of identity, of stories, of conditioning that's not useful. And so when our attention is trapped, we experience that. We don't experience freedom. So when, once we've worked with this quite a bit, so sometimes it's years, I need to disprove thoughts that aren't true. I need to learn how to feel through my emotions instead of resist them. All of this work helps us slowly start accessing primary emotions. So I spoke about in a previous video how you can start to relax these secondary somatic contractions and see what's underneath there. But there's also something else you can do. And, and you can think of this as the fear response, fear of feeling that primary emotion. So what you can do is challenge this fear. And the way that we challenge it is that we don't buy in. We don't buy into this fear, we test it. Am I really supposed to be afraid in this moment? Is this really scary? What if I shift my attention to something really pleasant, something I'm enjoying doing, or shifting attention to dharma, whatever it is you feel like is your dharma in this life, your duty, what it feels like energizes you, it feels like it's on purpose for you. As you do this, this is such an interesting phenomenon, but I've experienced this so many times, I didn't have the words for it yet until now. What happens when we shift our attention to something pleasant 
and we hang out there, you might have noticed sometimes we cry. Sometimes the old pain comes up. Sometimes you were just having a wonderful time. You were dancing or you were just feeling so relaxed. You were just blissing out. This has happened to me <laughs> after blissing out for several days. An old, old wound came up. It was like you know, almost 20 years ago. I had never been able to access the original one. And it came up in a way that there was now plenty of space to hold something so vulnerable. There was just plenty of safety, felt sense of safety for this to come up. And it's not that my actual circumstance or condition was safe. That's not why I was blissing out. <laughs> I was blissing out because I was realizing who I was. And even in circumstances that were actually not so safe, this realization trumped that. And I felt that safety. I just tell you this so that it doesn't feel hopeless or helpless if you are in a difficult circumstance. And I understand the nervous system does respond to things that don't feel safe. But as you continue to investigate and know who you are, it happens less and less because you don't buy in as much. And so what I would do is I would say, nothing is missing even now. And I've, I've experienced that so many times that it kept landing in deeper and deeper places. And I was experiencing this bliss. And then out of nowhere, after several days of doing this, the old wound came up and it was the primary wound. So for a long time on this particular thing, I could only get to the secondary responses. And I'd been working on it and trying. But what happens is when we're investigating in the soma and we're trying to do the work, oftentimes we're meeting the secondary reactions, which is fine. Start there. Do that. But this is kind of good news that you don't have to just keep working on yourself all the time. You get to have fun. You get to shift your attention to things that are pleasant, give you meaning, give you purpose. And as you do that, the work is going to still be happening within you. The primary emotion is going to come up at some point when it feels safe. If you're still on that fight or flight wheel, usually we can't access the deepest stuff because there's not enough space to hold it and to see it with compassion, with equanimity, with just kind of a neutral, equal mind with allowing it, with accepting it, because we have that capacity, because we're relaxed. Otherwise, intelligently, the body has to push all that stuff down because we're not relaxed. This is not the right time. So once we're resting and doing something pleasant, it'll come up on its own and you can just trust your body. You can just rest assured in knowing that you don't have to do, do, do all of this perfectly. You can just rest and take care of yourself and your body knows how to unwind trauma. It's gonna come up. When it comes up, welcome it. So when this happened to me, very old trauma, I was able to just, you know, wail as if somebody had died. It was, it was really a big thing for a week. And the whole time, I mean, it was such raw pain. I can't explain how raw, but I knew the whole time. I'm so glad this is finally coming up. I'm so glad. I know this is good. I know this is good. I know, like I knew it. And if you can keep that mentality, like, okay, I'm, I'm going to feel it all. I'm going to feel it. And I know this is a good thing. <laughs> then, you, then you're not going to push it down and resist it. And after that week, I'm just like lighter than ever before. And I just want you to know that you can handle it. If it's coming up in your body, it's usually because you have the space. And it's really an opportunity and it's better out than in. But back to, you know, primary emotions, secondary emotions, you want to really notice what's happening here. If there's tension in the body, it's usually a secondary somatic reaction trying to protect you from feeling 
the primary emotion. Stories are coming up. They're helping you not feel the primary emotion, but they're also most likely related to the secondary emotion. So they're, they're just connected. And it's not that the stories are necessarily causing the tension. They can be, but also the tension can be causing the stories. It goes in both directions. And so I did ask Ryan, I was like, well, what about stories? connected to the primary feeling. I imagine that might be some of your questions as well. And he gave a great answer. He's like, well, there might've been an original story, but if you were you know, one year old or five years old, you probably forgot whatever that was. And then what has happened since is all the coping behaviors, all the defense mechanisms that got continuously developed over time and started showing up in the body. That makes so much sense to me that that is something we've probably all invested in for most of our lives since things happened. But it's the primary emotion that kind of got pushed down. And then whatever story, I mean, some of this was when we were pre-verbal, right? So it could also just be a mental impression that not even, you know, a verbal story, but maybe just a sense that, oh, I was treated this way. That means I'm not enough, right? Just a sense of that. And then maybe we had words for that later. So I think this is a really empowering, beautiful way to think about how to access the primary emotion. I do have a previous video about primary emotions in addition to the other one I mentioned about um, psychological ego and somatic ego, how to get under the secondary reaction. So I would probably encourage you to watch all three of those to target primary emotions, but also just know it's not often something we can control. <laughs> but as we get more able to challenge the fear of feeling the primary emotion and shift the attention to something pleasant, we can then start accessing that primary emotion quicker and quicker. And so that's the good news about this. It's something to cultivate. And this is more advanced stuff. So those of you who are new to the channel, I would actually start with the secondary emotion. And, and you'll, you'll, you'll think it's the primary. It'll, it'll be the only one that you're able to perceive. That's great. Work with that. Work with the thoughts that are happening in your mind. But for those of you who've been doing this for years, and you're like, okay, what's next? <laughs> this is what you can do next. Challenge the fear. Shift your attention enjoy your life and trust your body's going to pull it up. And when it comes up, welcome it, be willing to sit in it, whatever it is, accept it, be with it with compassion. Oftentimes when we're in a good place in our lives and we have that bandwidth, we can give so much compassion to this emotion where maybe there wasn't compassion for it before or space. So for example, if you, you know, whenever the thing happened that might be stuck within you, if at that time you were judging yourself or blaming yourself or, you know, just any sort of resistance, then those emotions are like, well, I'm not going to get met with compassion. <laughs> so I'm not going to come up when all the secondary stuff takes over. So as you grow in self-love, self-acceptance, self-worth, recognizing your inherent self-worth, it's not something you have to earn or grow, just recognize, <laughs> so grow in your recognition of your self-worth, then these feelings will come up and feel safe to be seen. So this is why when you've just watched a funny movie, you're having a great day, you might just notice something's coming up and don't think that something's wrong. It's the opportunity. You know, we experience the sympathetic, parasympathetic, we're experiencing the flow constantly. And so if you're in a great place, then your body might just flow to the next place to help it balance itself. So it's not like we have to always feel amazing. <laughs> we, we want to feel like we can flow with whatever's in our experience, whatever we're feeling. And then as we do that, our body is just balancing and it's lowering our set point of arousal, basically. So 
they're, you know, the people where you can walk behind them and you can go like this to their waist and then they, they freak out <laughs> and they jump. So they have a very high set point. You know, they may have had trauma or a lot of stress, and then it doesn't take much for them to get to the threshold where their body will react. So here, as things are happening throughout your day and you're releasing, it's going to lower your overall set point so that it's harder and harder to reach that place where you're going to have a reaction up into, you know, a strong fight or flight or a freeze response. So lastly, I'm going to end with something that's going to sound so counterintuitive, but in light of what I've, sp I've spoken about in this video today, when you want to work on the primary emotion, you don't have to check in with your body. <laughs> you don't have to scan your body. You don't have to go examine your story because when you go into the body to scan, it can activate this network of conditioning that might take you right back into the same looping if you haven't unwound a lot of it. You can literally just go do something you enjoy. You can allow yourself to rest as much as you're able into a parasympathetic state or even something where it's more sympathetic, but it feels meaningful, purpose-driven, pleasant, dharmic. As you do that, the primary emotion will come up when it's ready. So I do still recommend scanning <laughs> for, you know, especially beginning and even consistently, if you want to just be mindful of what's going on, doing the constant work of, is what I'm thinking true? Am I resisting my feelings? Do that. So I'm not saying don't do that, but if you're specifically looking to target a primary emotion, and I can't promise when it's going to happen, but these are the ways you can increase the odds of it coming up, is shifting attention away from scanning, doing something you enjoy, treating your emotions with compassion, expanding the container you have. You can do that with physical resourcing exercises. You can, you know, be really relaxed at ease. Kind of let yourself settle and sink in to just this peaceful relaxation. And that's going to expand the container and pull all that stuff up when it's ready. Let me know your thoughts. I know this is pretty different from previous videos, but I'm really excited about this next level. And let me know if you've had this experience before, if you've had this wonderful time, but then tears came up right after. And just know that that's normal. You can trust your body. Okay, I hope this helps in some way. Take care, see you next time.